Welcome to the Bippity Boppity Basics Podcast, a lifestyle podcast with a magical twist. I'm your host, Caitlin May, and I'm a self-proclaimed Disney adult and childless millennial who is obsessed with Harry Potter, Florida sunshine, and all things basic. Here on the podcast, I chat weekly about everything Disney, Harry Potter, theme park news, and navigating my basic late 20s life. Welcome back, Magical Basics, um, and Happy New Year. As you're listening to this, um, it is January 1st, 2023. How, what is that face for? Why? I just remember the last time we were excited for a new year, and it was January 1st of 2020, so yes, flashbacks. <clears throat> yeah, so if you're listening and you're new here, I'm Katie, this is my voice. This is my husband, Jonathan. Hi. <laughs> That's his voice. Um, and yeah, the last time, actually the first and only time we ever like dressed up and did anything to ring in the new year, the world literally collapsed. It was probably our fault. It was a fun new year. It was a fun new year, but um, yeah, we never did that again. <laughs> Anyway, I digress. Um, I Okay, so before we start this episode, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who reached out um, after we uploaded the last episode. It was like a super short, like little, um, I don't want to say recap, but basically just um, like a little reset of the show, I should say. Um, and yeah, I've, I've gotten a lot of like messages on our Instagram and stuff like that. And you guys have been just really sweet and supportive about it. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for, um, just being kind and being our friends and being a part of this community with us. It really means the world to us. Um, another thing that I don't think I ever addressed, I make it sound like it's so dramatic, but, um, I can hear myself doing it and if i have a list now see i just you did you just hear how i said list list it's a really unfortunate <laughs> word to describe what well, a speech impediment <laughs> i know um i never thought about that until I'm, oh i think just about it every time i hear that say word. yeah that word um i got invisalign so if i sound weird and I know I do because I can literally hear it. I'm sorry. And I also think that it's even more amplified because these are new trays. And I feel like the more you wear them, the more like flexible they get. And like the longer I go in a tray, the more normal I begin to talk through it. And I literally just changed them last night so I can feel myself not having as much room <laughs> in these trays as I can. And that's unfortunate when... Um, some of your income comes from public speaking. Mo actually, all of my income comes from public speaking now that I think about it. Um, so, yes, that wasn't even in the script for today, but I literally can just feel myself. So let's get started with this episode. Um, really quick before we get into it, again, I do want to shout out the basic of the week and this week's basic of the week is Disney Love 0610. Thank you so much, Annette, for following the show, for supporting us and listening. It means the world to us. So um, big it, thanks to you. Is it a basic of the month now? Basic of the month. It the is. Whole month. The whole month. Amazing. Wow. I didn't even think about that. It is definitely a basic of the month now. I should change the name. <laughs> I think I just did all the promo photos for Instagram wrong. I now mean, that I think about it. It can be for a week and then... And then I just announce it yeah. on somewhere else on Instagram. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go change that after this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Magical Basics. Have you been thinking about starting your own podcast, but you don't know where to begin? 
I completely understand because when Bippity Boppity Basics first launched, I felt the exact same way. Honestly, thank goodness that I had Anchor to help me. So if you've never heard of Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. I know what you're thinking. Katie, is it really that easy? Oh, it is. So let me tell you how. First, it's completely free. We love that. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And then Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more platforms. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's literally everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you so much to Anchor for sponsoring this portion of today's episode. Um, okay, so let's start off with the um, updates of our week before we get into our Disney cruise. Why are you Did you buy that? this? A long time ago. I have no memory. Was I there? I know. I got it at the warehouse on sale. It's <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, our whole Disney room is just John being like, have you always had this? And I'm like, yeah. And it just like grows and grows and grows. And he's like, are you sure? I'm like, all my life. I've always had it. I didn't just buy that. What? Okay. <laughs> Let's start off with our swarms and splashes for the week. Oh, I did That's not a- know we had to do that. It's just your highs and lows. Okay. That's also an unfortunate catchphrase that I have now. Swords and splashes. <laughs> Back here. Um, do you want time to think about it? Yeah. Because I prepped mine. Okay. Um, my splash for the week is that our flight home got canceled from Christmas because we flew on Southwest and we literally had to drive what was it like 13 14 hours yeah home love that for i'm us. stealing that one too because i can't think of anything worse that happened to me this week <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was really and bad. honestly you had the worst part than i did i just rode you yeah. actually had to do the driving so i feel bad that i took that one but we can share it and we'll share it it was it was not a fun time. No, it was not a fun time. And then we got stuck in like multitudes of traffic. It was just all around. All around. Um my Soren for this week was for sure Christmas. Love Christmas. But I also am just riding that like New Year's high because I am the type of person that loves a Monday, a beginning of the month, beginning of the year, you know, like a a new beginning type gal. And the new year, January 1st is the ultimate new beginning day, you know? Um so, I'm I'm definitely riding that high. What's your What's your high of the week? I think it's that we're getting into Indian food. <laughs> <laughs> You, I have always loved Indian food. I don't know how you missed the Indian food train. So somehow we've been together for like seven years and for the first time together had Indian food like two weeks ago. Yeah. But also for basically the first time ever for me in my whole life had Indian food. So. So would you say that's your pin of the week is Indian food? That's just something I'm vibing with. It's like what you're obsessed with. I'm obsessed with my Legos your that Legos? I got for Christmas. Oh, <laughs> your New Hor- Horizon, New Horizon. Horizon Forbidden West. Horizon Forbidden West Legos with yeah. the tiny Aloy. Very excited. I die. Um, oh, that's good. Um, it will come as no shock to anybody who knows me personally or even online um, that my obsession currently 
and has been for literally three months now is the Midnight's album by our Lord and Savior Taylor Swift. <laughs> Did you just hear that? Blair. <laughs> Do you want to be on the show? I think she gets fed soon. She does get fed soon. She gets fed in three minutes. Mm. I would also say on the theme of the episode that my pin would be that I am vibing with cruises now. Big facts. Great didn't, segue. Didn't didn't know that about me. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't know what this episode is about, you obviously did not read the title. Um, but we're talking about our Disney cruise. We just went on a Disney cruise. One, it was our first Disney cruise. But two, it was just our first cruise in general ever like neither of us had ever been on a cruise ship before and i not spoiler alert we are our pins of the year honestly our pin of 2022 is our cruise for sure and now we're just like itching to get back on the next one um so that uh is what we're going to talk about today and basically the whole meat of this episode i just went on instagram my personal one and the podcast one so if you don't follow either you're missing out um and i just asked like what questions do you have about disney cruises in general or like what would you like to hear us talk about um on the episode about our first cruise and so yeah i had a lot come in and we're just gonna go through the list and talk about it and answer your questions and see what um what topics of conversation that brings up cool 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 all right first question this was probably my favorite question ever because it was probably something that i was like most like oh oh she got fed um it was probably the one thing that i too was most like oh my god i hope that this is not accurate um, the first question is, were there a lot of kids running around everywhere? <laughs> I mean, there were a lot of children, mm-hmm. but I felt like they were more contained than one might have expected. Yes, I would agree with that. So, um, definitely a lot of families. I think it's safe to say that we were the minority being a family unit or like a a unit, I should say, because there were probably, like, groups of friends on the cruise as well. But we were definitely the minority in being people who were there together that lacked children. Um, But what's nice about Disney cruises, and I feel like all cruises do this, I can't say definitively or not because I've never been on one, Um, but they had, like, so many activities for the kids, and there were people specifically on the ship that were, like, activities like coordinators for the kids throughout the day. Um, And another thing that was super nice is that the kid zones where like their activities, I don't want to call it babysitting, but like it was babysitting, but babysitting basically Um, those zones were deck two and one or just two, just two, just two. And um, adults didn't go down there. Like, the last full day of the cruise, they had, like, open houses. So, if we wanted to go down and, like, tour them just to see the whole ship, we could. But um, the kids, I feel like, stayed pretty contained to the the deck, too, and the activities. Now, when we dined, we obviously were surrounded by families, Um, but we were assigned to two other couples who did not have children. So our dining was super nice. We weren't sat with a family, um, and like felt like we were intruding on their dinner. And I never once thought like, I don't, I was never once like bombarded by kids. Yeah. It's not like being in the parks. Also, there was adults only pools and things like that. So Yes. So that brings on the next question. Are there adult only areas on the Wish? So the Wish is the ship that we were specifically on for our Disney cruise. It's the newest in the fleet. Um, It's actually, well, when you're listening, this is 2023. But 2022 was the first year that it ever sailed. 
Um, so yes, to answer your question, there are adult only zones on the ship. There are, um, well, the Star Wars, the only bar that was adult only was the Rose, right? Was it? Because the Bayou had kids. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't ever remember seeing kids in the hyperspace lounge, but I don't think it was adult only. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. Um, There is an adult only pool area, and it was super nice. It had a coffee shop, and we hung out there a lot. Um, The, it was, what was it, deck 15 and 14? Mm -hmm. were adult only period um and they had the two um what would you call them like separate restaurants i guess restaurants that were not dining for the ship like they were um you had to schedule yes you had to schedule a reservation and you paid like a normal restaurant like not like a normal restaurant like triple a normal restaurant okay (laughs) expensive yeah like a normal fine dining five-star restaurant i'm teasing um and then that one of them was a steakhouse and the bar attached to it was called the rose it was all beauty and the beast themed it was a stunning bar um and that was for sure adult only because it was on deck 14 and 15 Mm -hmm. um other adult only stuff that they had on the cruise um at nighttime one of the lounges called luna turned into 18 and up and they would do like karaoke like fun like know your spouse kind of games um and that had a bar attached to it as well called the ale and compass is what it was called something compass i think it i think it was the ale and compass i don't know um it very much was like a nordic pub it was cute um but that turned into 18 plus you bring your mic down oh okay that's better better okay that turned into an 18 plus area at night and I feel like that was all that was 18 plus. Well, on their island, they had the beach. Oh, yes. So on the private island um, that Disney has in the Bahamas, they have an adult only. It's literally like the other side of the island. You have to get shuttled to it. But it's got its own beach and bar and dining area. Um, and it was adult only. And it was so nice. So... Um, yes, there are places that you can escape the mayhem of children if you want. And you can also take advantage of it, too, if you do, like, cruise with kids, you know, instead of, like, being us who don't have kids. Um, because, honestly, we took a tour of the ship, and our tour guide described some of the activities that the kids did throughout the day. And I was like, I kind of want to do this. Like, this sounds fun. Our cabin was also technically adults only, so. (laughs) Just stay in your cabin all (laughs) (laughs) Look, if you're trying to avoid people. Uh, Okay. Next question. Actually, a lot of questions because a lot of people asked the same thing. Did you find the amount of stuff to do and see overwhelming on a short trip? Is the weekend trip enough time to see everything? Did you like the length of your cruise? Did you feel like three days was enough time? So a lot of people wondering if um, we liked, you know, just all about a three-day cruise because that's what we took. Um, So do you want to explain a little bit why we chose a three-day cruise? Because we didn't know if we would like it. Correct. (laughs) Um, I get very motion sick, and we'll talk about that more in detail a little bit later because we got a lot of questions about seasickness as well. Um, I get very motion sick, and so I was scared to get on the ship, and none of the things that I tried to control my motion sickness would work, and then I would just be miserable for like seven to ten days. Um, another thing is that cruise ships are kind of scary when you think about them, (laughs) you know, like they're just like big pieces of machinery out in the open ocean. And when you've never been on one, that can be terrifying. So we didn't know if we'd like that. We didn't know if we'd like, you know, you get, it's just like, 
fear of the unknown and did we really want to, um, what word am I looking for? Commit. That's the word. Commit ourselves to something longer than a three day. So we thought, let's sign up for a three day. Let's test the waters, pun intended. And, uh, <laughs> silent drums. Um, let's see if cruising is something that we would like. So first question, did you find the amount of stuff to do and see overwhelming on a short trip? Yes. Yes. A thousand percent. <laughs> A thousand percent yes. My personal opinion is that you need a minimum of five days. Yeah, I agree. I think um, I think if you've cruised before, especially on that ship, like we met some of our friends, Kelsey and John. I had Kelsey on the podcast. Um, but they just so happened to be on the ship with us and they were with their friends and their friends had already sailed on the wish earlier this year. And so I feel like I would say like, okay, if you did like a five day on the ship and you wanted to do just like a short little one and you've already been on the ship, you're going to sail. I think that's fine because you're not going to feel the need to do everything. Um, And we very much felt that need. Like we have to do everything that this ship offers. Obviously, we know that's impossible, but. We felt that pressure because we were there spending our money, um, and I did not feel like we had enough time. I felt very overwhelmed, to answer your question, about everything that was offered to us um, for the three days. It sucks to feel guilty for just, like, sitting. (laughs) Yeah. Like, sitting by the pool or just, like, on your balcony, and you're like, I should be doing something because I don't have much time. And we paid money to be Well, here. and we were talking about this. I feel like still on the cruise is that we thought this cruise was going to... We thought a cruise vacation was going to be so, like, relaxing and rejuvenating. And it was nice, but she got fed again. <laughs> um... It was nice and there were relaxing bits, but I did feel guilty being like, why am I lounging by a pool when I literally could do that at my apartment complex at home? Um, Like, I should be doing X, Y, and Z because, you know, so. Um, Is the weekend trip enough time to see everything? No. No. (laughs) Thousand percent, no. But then again, I don't know if I would say... And I've never been on one, so you could correct me. Um, I would also say five days is probably not long enough. Not to do everything, yeah. but to balance it better. I feel like it's very much a Disney trip, like a Disney trip in that respect. Like Disney World has, well, I should just say like the Disney parks in general has so much to do, see, and offer. Um And you really need to just be like, okay, what am I interested in? What are the people that I'm with interested in? And kind of niche it down that way. Because, um, yeah, it's a lot. There's a lot to do. There's a lot offered. I don't have anything else to say. Okay, you have nothing to add? I was Um, listening to the sirens outside. Did you like the length of your cruise? It was fine. For what we did, but I would want to go longer next time. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I'm glad, and I guess this ties into was like, did you feel like three days was enough time? I'm glad we did three days for the reason that we did three days. The whole fact of like, we didn't want to commit to, um, We didn't want to commit to something longer, but at the same time, I feel like if you're a first time cruiser and you are like, you don't suffer from seasickness or anything like that, definitely book yourself longer. I also, I also see doing more three days cruises in our future Just because now I feel like we won't feel the pressure to literally do everything. Like, I feel like if we were like, oh, you know, we got a good deal. Let's do three days and literally let's just lay by the pool. Like, let's not do the excursions. Let's just eat our weight and food. 
and lay by the pool, that, I feel like we would like that much better than trying to fit like a whole cruise ship plus excursions in three days. Here's what I would say. Three days is fine if it's not a Disney cruise. Mm. But there's no point in spending that amount of money to lounge by the pool on a Disney cruise and not do all the Disney things, you know? It's true. It's true. You can get a three-day cruise for a couple hundred dollars on Royal Caribbean or whatever. We spent more than a couple yeah. hundred dollars on a three-day cruise. Um, the price difference is pretty significant. So I think there are other cruise lines that are better suited to like the lounging and vacation and maybe you don't need to do all the activities and excursions. But if you're going to do a Disney cruise, you're doing it for a reason and take advantage of the activities and don't look at it as like, maybe the most relaxing trip think of it more like a hybrid of a park and resort trip you know to disney world or something like that yeah i yeah i agree um best food 1923 really yeah that was the the first restaurant that we dined at and i was very very impressed with everything that came out yeah, I agree. It was the more like fine dining of the three mm-hmm. and we were we were on the Roy Disney side. Yeah, so the three dining rooms on the Wish are 1923, which one dining room is Roy Disney and that's going to be like all the animated features that came after Walt and then the other dining room is the Walt Disney side and that's going to be like the OG like um Peter Pan, Snow White, Fantasia, things like that. Um, that food was amazing. I, I don't know if I'd have a favorite food though, because I feel like every single dining experience we had was phenomenal. The next night was Avengers. That was so fun. And then the third night was the frozen dining experience. And that was amazing too. I guess my judging is the fact that I got the steak each night. Oh yeah. So I had the same. I switched it up a lot more. I had essentially the same type of menu item. Like they were different, like a tenderloin versus a you know, prime rib or whatever the differences were, but I had whatever the steak option was. And the first one was the most like unique and different. Mm -hmm. The Avengers was definitely like a traditional kind of meat and potatoes type of a thing. And I feel like so was frozen. Like they were good, but there wasn't something significant or unique about it. Whereas I felt like the first one, it was, it was elevated. Yeah, for sure. Um, I feel like I... I feel like for my favorite food, if I had to pick one, it would be like the cocktails on the ship. Mm. Um, There's so many fun bars on the Wish, even if you don't drink. Like they had a lot of really good non-alcoholic offerings too. Um, But you have the Nightingale, which we unfortunately did not get to go into RIP, but it looked super cute from the outside. Um the Bayou, which is a Princess and the Frog themed bar. The Hyperspace Lounge, which is Star Wars. The Rose. Um, what other bar? The, the Ale and Compass. The Ale and Compass, which we didn't... Yeah, we, we got drinks from there. Briefly, um, yeah. But... And then I they have... I mean, those are the themed ones. And then they've got the... Like, yeah, they have like normal like bars. Just like a bar on the corner. Of yeah, 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 yeah. An area. I just think the theming of the like themed bars and the cocktails that they like came up with to complement everything was just super well thought out. Everything was delicious. I don't remember having anything on that ship that I was like, ew. I mean, even the breakfast buffet was like delicious. Delicious. (laughs) Mickey waffles. Are you kidding me? Like the fruit was not the like normal stale. No. Flat flavored. The coffee shops, the coffee at the coffee Coffee shops. Coffee was great. (gasps) So good. I got a Chemex. So good. Yeah, I, it's, it's hard to pick the, I mean, even the turkey burger up on the pool deck slapped. (laughs) It slapped. Um, I got a hot dog and it also slapped. That late night pizza we had slapped. That was after hitting like three of the bars. Yeah. It was good pizza. Yeah. So the food on there phenomenal my tummy is literally grumbling because i'm like we haven't eaten dinner yet and we're talking about all the food on the ship um any food that you would skip 
Well, in this case, we specifically skipped the fancy restaurants because we just had the three nights and three restaurants. And I heard people say like, oh, if you're going to be there longer and you're going to repeat a restaurant, then that's a chance to go eat at one of those. I think I still would eat at the regular restaurants. They were all so good. Yeah, and just like try a whole different meal. Yeah, it was not like a fixed menu or anything. It wasn't buffet. It was Mm -hmm. order off a menu. There was probably three or four options for like entrees that were like normal and then it had like a lighter fare and Mm -hmm. then it had soups and salads so like probably had 12 15 choices on each menu yeah you had ample yeah there was there was a lot of room to to go back and try new things and it was all delicious yeah i agree any any it just anything in general that you would skip on the cruise (laughs) nothing that i did i mean so I, okay, if you were to go on this cruise specifically, um, I would say skip Nassau. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah don't, like, don't, don't do the excursion. Yeah, so our friend told it to us perfectly that pretty much any and every Caribbean cruise is going to stop at Nassau. So that's definitely not something special to the Disney cruises. And unless you're doing an excursion, like going to Atlantis or whatever they have, like snorkeling or whatever, uh, I wouldn't even get off the boat. No. Like, we got down just to, like, get a shirt and see what it was all about. And I could have done without that. Yeah. Um, I mean, we found a great shop (laughs) and we bought sheets. We bought bed sheets. So that was worth it. (laughs) But I mean, that's not the reason to go on a cruise. No, 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 no. I would say that would probably be the number one thing that I would say skip on the cruise is that that port was just, I mean, it was nice. Don't get me wrong, but I'm, uh, I would have rather laid by the pool literally all day long or explored the ship that day and spent all day at Castaway Key the next day. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I regret not spending more time there. I agree. So. And I could have done without that excursion that we did. The fish feeding one? Yeah. yeah. It was fun to do it and to see, like, we actually got to see the fish, which yeah. was cool. It was like the glass bottom boat tour. But for the money and for the missing out of the time that you could have spent doing the things Sipping that were included in the price. ice cream and adult only beach. Yeah. I think that that might have been. There was a better use of our time for that. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right. The question that we got the most. How was the motion sickness? What tips do you have? Did you get seasick? That's my fear. And then another, did you get seasick? <laughs> the trick is just to always be drunk. <laughs> no, I'm just eating. <laughs> so, no. uh, do you want to go first? I was just going to say that for me making sure that you had something to maybe help you sleep Mm -hmm. like i had my my sleeping stuff um is probably important because during the day it was not bad especially taking our like the motion sickness medicine yeah we were fine we weren't gonna throw up but it's weird going to bed rocking yes so i have i would say pretty severe motion sickness um and i didn't buy anything special i usually just take bonine um which is like dramamine but it's not drowsy at all and i just took bonine the whole time i did not feel sick once ever but i feel like i felt miserable the most when i was trying to go to sleep i did Mm -hmm. not like the rocking i did not take the cbd like you did and i regret that um so definitely have a sleep aid Um, because I really regretted that. And like, there was a night where I was like, I don't want to go on a cruise again. (laughs) Um, because we had some rough water. I, we did have rough water. Um, I, my tips for you would be to, um, definitely bring medicine. One of our friends at the dining table, he wore the bracelets and he said they worked like a charm. So maybe have like a fail safe, like, okay, I'm going to wear the bracelet and take the medicine if you're super worried about it. Um, But I think my biggest thing, my biggest tip, and my mom gave me this tip, 
She wore the seasick patch and she made the mistake of the minute she set foot back on land. When she left her cruise, she took it off and she did not let her body process through that medicine. Um, And so she was like getting seasickness vertigo on land like three hours after her cruise ended. Um, So I would definitely say do that. Like take it like beginning of the day that you embark and take it all throughout the next day like at the end of your cruise and let your body like get on a normal cycle of your land legs that would probably be my biggest tip um but other than that I really didn't struggle at all with it definitely sleep aid and like taking the medicine before and after my two biggest tips take the medicine even if you don't think you're gonna need it correct (laughs) yeah because I don't get motion sick, but I took it and was thankful. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like... You don't know how much it's going to rock, you know? Yeah. And if you drink, like you're mixing alcohol with that, you know, like it's just... I didn't want to be miserable on my Disney cruise, you know? Mm-hmm. I'd rather just take the medicine instead of risk it for the biscuit, you know? Yeah. Um... Is it just as magical feeling as the Disney parks? Yeah. I would say yes. Yeah. Hands down. How many moments did I cry on this cruise? 73. Yeah. (laughs) Accurate number. Um, No, I think Disney did a really good job at making it feel like it had the magic of the Disney parks. We had fireworks at sea. That was super magical. The theming And I understand that we're on the wish and it's the nicest of the ships and the fleet. And it's a little bit, I feel like, better themed from the impression that I get of the other ships. But the theming of everything, the kindness of the cast members, um, the dining experiences, the shows, the characters, the entertainment... It, everything felt, it was like a Disney park on water. Yeah, it felt like Disney. Yeah, and it had the heart. Yeah, I cried a lot. I cried a lot. And they have cruise. fireworks at sea. I mean, come on. Apparently the only cruise line that does that. Only cruise line. And it was fun, too. It was like the pirate party. So you had like Jack Sparrow and you had Red. Mm-hmm. Um, I Yes, it is definitely just as magical as the Disney parks. Um, Except you don't have to wait in line. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Except for guest services. <laughs> yeah. Or the Aqua Mouse, but we didn't. Write yeah, it. we didn't. We didn't write that. What was your absolute favorite part of the cruise? There is no favorite. Really? Yeah. Just it was like just the all whole, just equal. The whole experience was pretty legit. Yeah, I get that. Um, I think. I don't want to take your answer, so I'm going to try and think of something. <laughs> I mean, my my second favorite is probably the island that we went to. If I could have stayed there all day. Big like, yes. It was so clear. Castaway Key was phenomenal. Hands down. Phenomenal. Um, and even, like, the part, like, the family part was so nice, too. Like, you can, you're the only one on the island. You're the only ship docked at that island um and yeah i could have spent like six days on that island just living my best life by that crystal clear water (laughs) um how was the entertainment on board top notch for me yeah yeah we had characters literally all the time literally um bell Moana, Tiana, Mickey, Minnie, Cinderella, Pluto, Daisy, Donald. We had... um, We had dinner with Elsa. We had dinner with Anna and Elsa and the gang. We had... There were meet and greets with Jack Sparrow. There was um, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Chewbacca. Literally so many character meet and greets. Um... The activities cast members who did, like, like the MCs of, like, karaoke and the game shows and stuff like that, top-notch as well. 
Um, the dancers, performers in the shows, incredible. Um, and I loved the shows particularly because I feel like they were a great introduction to like live theater for little mm-hmm. kids because it's already stories that they know and love. Um, on a Broadway caliber, like, of performance, but shrunk to, like, 20 to 30 minutes, which is super nice. So, you're not, you don't feel like you're wasting your whole night if you go and see the show, but, um, I thought the acting, the singing was amazing. Uh, the deck parties were fun, too. The pirate party was, like, all 80s music. (laughs) So good. Um, yeah, the entertainment on the cruise was amazing, and that's kind of what I was telling John when we were deciding to go, like, on a Disney cruise versus just a normal cruise, is that I was like, I feel like I would get so much more enjoyment out of the entertainment of a Disney cruise, because it's, you know, it's songs that we love. I mean, Hercules came out and sang Go the Distance one night, and I was a puddle on the floor. Um... So, I don't know, it was just things that we already were, like, emotionally attached to, other than, you know, like, as opposed to, like, an Elvis impersonator, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so, yeah, the entertainment, top notch. Um, would you recommend going with a big group? Why not? Yeah, I feel the same way. I, I loved that it was just us two. Um, but I feel like we would have enjoyed it. I mean, we made our own group. So. Yeah, we did. And I don't want to say we would have enjoyed it more if we had more people with us, but I think, I don't know how to say That's it. That's another reason that I wish I was on there longer. Cause I felt like by the third day we had our people that mm-hmm. we were doing stuff with and we would have done more. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We, like I said, we already had friends on the cruise, so we spent time with them. We hung out with them, and it was really nice to have, like, just other people our age to hang out with. And then we got partnered up so nicely with the couples assigned to our dinner spot, um, and we ended up hanging out with them the whole third night, too. And that was really nice. So I would say 1,000% go with a group of people. Yeah. Um, It was super nice, us two. Um, but at the same time, like go with a huge group of people. And if you want to just do like a couple's, like couple's activities or something, that's kind of the perk of the cruise ship is that there's something that will cater to everyone's interest and you can go off and do your own thing without feeling like, without feeling guilty for not hanging out with everybody every second of the day. Speaking of our couple friends, we have a good piece of advice that we learned through them that you don't schedule a spa treatment after dinner. After dinner. (laughs) They were like, we ate so much food and our bellies were so full. And they were like pushing on our back. But um, yeah, go in a big group. Why not? That Honestly, that was fun. That sounds really fun. Can we go? Are we invited (laughs) to this big group Disney cruise? Because I would love to do that. I mean, you can't stop us. So (laughs) (laughs) we're going to show up. Um. We already talked about how the private island was. That was one of our questions. Beautiful. 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, That private island is worth going on a Disney cruise, in my opinion. So, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely are you to go again? Well, I already booked the next one, so. (laughs) We were literally like, what, maybe 45 to like two hours like in that time span on the ship we literally had not even left port canaveral yet and john was like i'm paying the little fee to get 10 percent off your next disney which is why i had to stand in line and guest services because i messed up my payment thing and messed up my pin so i had to get it reset yeah um but yeah we we didn't even like embark yet and we already could tell that we were gonna really thrive and that we honestly me i don't want to speak for you but i was already regretting just three days um so yes on a scale of one to ten i vote ten at least a 12 14 (laughs) going on another one 
Um, and then final question, would you say that going on a Disney cruise, is is a Disney cruise worth it? I mean, I had a great time, but I have nothing to compare it to. So ask me next year after we go on a Royal Caribbean with your family. And yeah. Maybe we'll have a better answer. But for me personally, I, I had a great time. Yeah. So here's, here's, we're going on a Royal Caribbean cruise this year with my family. And we obviously have not been on that yet. So like John just said, we have nothing to compare this to. But I will, I'll put it this way. If you're listening to this show or if you're watching this show, you're obviously into Disney. Um, And if you're into Disney and you like cruises and you've never been on a Disney cruise, it's 100% worth it. That's fair. You know, you're already probably a Disney adult. You get that magic. You get the perks of the cruise and the magic of a Disney park all in one. Mm -hmm. To just go longer than three days. Yeah. Yeah. Um... All right, let's let's wrap up. Anything else that you have to add about the Disney cruise before we? No, I said move a lot. Along? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I don't have anything else to say. We had a great time. Ten out of ten would recommend a Disney cruise. Um, yeah. So let's wrap it all up. What are you currently reading and watching? I'm not reading anything. No. No. You do you read a book? Not currently. It's a been couple a months oh. ago. Well, last no, this month. Didn't you read that book oh, this yeah. month? Oh, I can't the one remember about the, the guy that was like kidnapped. Was he kidnapped? He was maybe in an alternate He's like space dimension. Kidnapped. Yeah, it was. It was not a bad book. It was not written the way I like books to be written, though. It was all like journal entries, and I hate that. Like. The Guernsey Literary Potato Peel yeah. Society. I like the story of that, but I hated the way that it was written. Mm-hmm. Probably like the movie more. Have not seen that. The movie is good. Anyway, yeah, it was a weird premise, and not a lot actually really happened, and it was kind of like a mis- mystery, like slowly unraveling, and then you kind of figure out what's going on pretty quick, and then it just is more of like, okay, now we know what's going on, and we're just, just gonna, reiterate, like, yeah, let it play out. Eh, so if you haven't been three stars (laughs) three stars if you haven't been reading you've obviously been watching share some of your favorite things you watched this month hmm this past month i should say (laughs) glass onion now my mind is a blank glass onion is actually the favorite thing that i've watched this month that's the favorite the all-time favorite I, i rated it five stars i said perfect film no notes wow yep Follow me on Letterboxd for more great reviews like that. No, I it was the perfect genre for me. Mm-hmm. Glass Onion was fun. Other than that, watching a lot of TV and random movies and can't think of anything noteworthy out of all of that. Okay, good talk. <laughs> um, I am the opposite. I really haven't been watching anything. I watched Glass Onion with you, but I think that's literally the only new thing that I've watched with you this month. Um, Black Panther. Mm, Black Panther was Black good. Panther was great. Anything else that we watched, that I watched with you? No. I don't think so. I think it was literally just Black Panther and Glass Onion. Um, I've been reading. Um, I did all Christmassy, well, some Christmassy reads, most Christmassy reads this month. I did A Merry Little Meet Cute, adorable. Um, Faking Christmas, adorable. Finished that this morning as we're recording not as you're listening um christmas baggage also cute um two books related to this show that i listened to were um jody benson's memoir a part of my world she was the voice of the little mermaid great audiobook and beyond the wand which is tom felton's book he plays draco malfoy get your wand oh there you go a little visual aid for the YouTube viewers. I love that. <laughs> With your wand. You didn't even use your, your Slytherin wand. Yeah. It's you hold it this way. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Switch and flick. Um, great books. So that's what I've been reading. And all right. That's it. You have anything else to add? I got nothing except 
I'm hungry and I'm going to go order wings. I love that for us. So <laughs> thank you so much for listening to the show. Overall, we literally were obsessed with our Disney cruise. We're definitely going on another Disney cruise and we're going on more cruises like Royal Caribbean and things like that in the near future. Um, also, if you want to see a little bit more about our Disney cruise, I did vlog it for my personal YouTube channel. So the link is in the description box and in the show notes down below. So if you want to see like what the ship looked like, all that fun stuff, um, that is a vlog up on my channel. And if you want to be, um, considered for basic of the month, be sure that you're subscribed, that you're following and listening to our show and that you follow us on Instagram. Blair's being needy. Um, so yes, that is all. I have to say, if you want to hear more, like, book episodes, let me know, because I've been thinking about doing that, and more Taylor Swift stuff, too. So, if that's something you're interested in, let me know, because I got a lot to say. Um, that should be what the show should be called. <laughs> I, I have a lot, lot to say. say. Um, so, yeah, let me know, honestly, just what kind of episodes you want to see in the future or listen to in the future, whether it be, like, park advice or just, like, more lifestyle, what have you. That would be great. And also, if you want to see someone as a special guest, send me their name and I'll reach out. But that is all we have for you this month. Um, and we'll see you in February, Magical Basics. Bye. Bye. <laughs>well, that's it for today's episode, Magical Basics. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to give us a follow and let us know what you thought of it. All of our links are in the show notes and description box down below. If you liked today's episode, please give us a rate and review. And don't forget to include your Instagram handle to be featured as our basic of the week. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We upload new episodes on Wednesdays and other videos on More Magic Mondays. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. So until then, basics, stay magical.